Hey, what's up guys, Bobo Rail here, and today I've got your usual breakdown for Isanzo's 28th and 29th dev blogs combined. So this and last week's dev blogs were some of the longest in recent memory, the first of which was somewhat of a compilation of all the Austro-Hungarian weapons that have been covered while also having some new footage and screenshots sprinkled in. The second one was a all-round display of the changes and improvements made to the gunplay and weapon animations in Isanzo. So without further delay, let's dive right into both of these, starting with dev blog 28. So first up in the weapons, we have the Manleischer Schonauer model 1903 which is one of the traditional bolt actions for the Austro-Hungarians. We've covered this one in the past and seen this clip before, but I figured it was worth mentioning for continuity's sake. Next, we have the Steyr Manleischer M95 with the C Reinhardt scope, which is obviously a weapon used by the marksman or sniper class. This is a sniper that has a straight pole bolt, which should make it much easier to maintain your sight picture while firing multiple rounds in quick succession, something very useful when trying to take out squads of enemies at a distance. Okay, so next we have the Wurndl, which is a bit of a meme gun, but a very fun gun to use that carries over from Tannenberg. This is a single shot rifle that was issued in smaller numbers to rearguard troops, but regardless, it's an accurate and reliable rifle similar to the much more famous Martini Henry in purpose. Of course, with a single shot rifle, your aim needs to be damn near perfect, and a sidearm would be suggested for tight spaces, but it makes it all the more satisfying to kill someone with it when you know you made your one shot count. Okay, so now let's move on to the pistols of Isanzo, starting with the Rastin Gasser Model 1898. This is an 8-shot revolver with a very slow reload due to the loading gate. And in this clip, we get some really gritty footage and a glimpse into what CQC is going to look like when fighting in the trenches with pistols. Next up, we have the Roth Steyr Model 1907. This is a really interesting semi-auto pistol that was used by Austro-Hungarian cavalry. Because of this, it's noted to have a very heavy trigger pull to prevent accidental discharge while riding, and I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up translating to a slower fire rate than other pistols in the game. This is reloaded via stripper clips in the top, which is similar to the next pistol on our list, the Steyr Han 1912. Seen in every game in the series so far, the Steyr Han was a popular German semi-auto pistol that appears to have received some much appreciated animation improvements. This blog also included pictures and GIFs for the austro hungarian Hungarian Minewiser M14 mortar, but we've already seen that before in the mortar's dedicated dev blog. While all these guns look amazing in dev blog number 28, we also got a little look at some of the non-lethal equipment. In particular, here we saw the binoculars again, probably will be rather useful if for scouting or spotting for mortars and snipers, and then we also got another look at the canteen and its use in game. So now we've covered pretty much everything in dev blog 28, so let's move on to number 29. This one was all about the gunplay improvements and changes in the series that have come with Isanzo, all of which are very important and exciting because it will make the game feel a lot smoother and more realistic to play. One example of how they've changed the way animations and weapons handle is their interaction with the environment, especially in tight spaces. As you can see in this clip, your gun will now get lifted out of the way in the 3D space and it will interact with the terrain and props around it. While it may not seem like much, having an added element of claustrophobic handling could make rifles more disadvantageous in close quarters quarters, and could give you another reason to choose a pistol and sacrifice your ranged capabilities for more maneuverability. So not only do I think this will improve balancing, but also will make the game look and feel a lot smoother. This one combined with many other changes to the way recoil works and new animations for reloading in different positions and tracking the stages of reloads, it will now make guns feel much more real, and I think that's pretty apparent by these clips. The staged reloads will now actively track your ammo count and will have different animations depending on the amount of ammo left before reloading. This will eliminate those frustrating reloads from previous games that would cancel your progress if you started sprinting. If a bullet goes in the chamber now, it's in the chamber, and you'll be able to pick up right where you left off even if you interrupted it. Your stance and movement will affect the animations of your weapon, and everything just seems to have much more inertia and care put into it than in previous games. One of the best examples to showcase this is that with the iconic Vilar Perosa, and in this clip you can see that the ammo visibly depletes so the player can actively look to see how many remaining rounds there are. This clip also showcases what is to me one of the biggest game changers gunplay wise. A new bipod system which is a much needed upgrade from that of Tannenberg and Verdun's. 
This will generally make LMGs much more valuable to the team, as they'll be more mobile, versatile, and will have a wider range of defensive capabilities when holding or attacking objectives. While we saw in the Violar Perosa clip you can fire from the hip, that's of course not the primary use for these weapons, but it will certainly still be useful in close range pinches as the volume of fire will prove deadly. The last thing we have to talk about in the gunplay department is the weapon sway, which we don't have a ton of footage to work with here, but we can see that it looks a lot more natural now. Apparently, it's more consistent with how breathing would actually affect the aiming down sights of weapons, and although it appears to have a wider radius of movement, it also looks a lot slower than it was in previous games. So it gives a little bit more weight to the guns, but also makes them a little easier to land shots when stationary. I think it's pretty apparent with this blog that a lot more work has gone to advance the series forward, and make some much appreciated quality of life improvements. While this blog is all about the gunplay, this extra effort has been shown in many other areas around the game, and with each one of these I get more and more excited to get my hands on the finished product. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today, this has been Bobo Rail here, and I'll catch you all in the next one.